Hello, welcome to my studio. Today, I'm going to set up a new wool storage solution. Right now, let's uh, clear some of this other stuff off and get things ready. This back section of my studio is going to be mainly for wool processing. So uh, the sewing machine's gotta go. I'll show you the other side of the room at another time. But right now, let's clear all these rulers off the wall and get to organizing all the wool. Now, if you check some of my older videos, and I will link them down below, you can see what this uh, area looked like with bags and bags of wool all over the floor, which really is a safety hazard and not a creative space. So right now getting this metal rack out of the way, it'll magically jump up onto that table in a few minutes. And let's get out this. This is a new rack storage solution, so it's kind of like the white one, but we have 20. Yeah, those are the racks. Um, 20 14 inch storage boxes. And I will link, um, I got it on Amazon, so I'll link that below. I am non affiliated with Amazon, but yeah, later date I might be, so that could change. So, first things first, you gotta create the base. Making sure each one of those little plastic rounds are locked into place. Now I have this on oh, six times speed, so um, it's going to go pretty fast. Cleaned off the dust bunnies that were left by the wall. And setting everything up. Now there are 20 boxes here, which is great for the space. But honestly, when I was done, I wish, wish I had a couple more. Now it was very important to actually get each piece locked in all the way. Otherwise there was alignment issues going up the stack, especially since we're going four by five. Now let's just sit back and watch this progress. Here I am using a pair of pliers to pull the wires together and just make those connections a little tighter. And if you see the white bars, they're designed to hang clothing on or other things. Right now I'm just using them to notate the, um, the box I'm going to leave fairly empty because there is a power plug um, right behind it. So I need to make sure I remember where that is and I don't just shove a big bag of wool on top of it. Now, at a later time, I will run a power cord um, with surge protector off of that, because if I get my Cricut out, I will have to do that in this area. The pliers actually worked really well for locking things together, and was a lot less arm strength, so yeah, big bonus there. So this thing is coming together, so let's finish this thing up. Now I had to take this next spot to the floor because it got to where I couldn't reach any higher. 
So here I am going to construct the last two sets of shelves. So I'm basically constructing it upside down. So right now the pieces that are going on the floor are going to be the very top of the unit. And then I'm going to work my way to um, up two rows and then connect them together. Now the footage I have connecting together is, is quite bad, so I cut it real short for you. But basically you just have to line everything up and push them in, which is not easy doing it alone. If you had a second person to help you, it would be a lot better. Now with that constructed, let's clean up all this garbage, get that out of the way, and play He-Man and set one on top of the other. Now, it's not heavy, it's just a lineup issue. And like I said, and you gotta watch my feet. So let's make this a little faster. And magically, we're all done. Now I'm gonna organize my wool, starting in the top right section with the finest wool I have. So a lot of that is uh, Shetland blends or mixed breeds. And then working my way to the coarser breeds, which are the mixed breed long wools. And yeah, Jacob goes in the middle. You see me organize these and reorganizing them because every time I brought in a new bag, sometimes the hole I wanted was full. So we gotta organize. But with everything in its own little bag, really made it easy to put them where they need to go. Now, if you look, all mine have little labels on them. Okay, not all, but most of them have little labels on them. <laughs> and then I made some as I went along. But this is a great time when you redo a room and clean it to take stock of what you have, what you're gonna use, and uh, rehome things that uh, you don't need anymore or no longer serve your purpose. You see me moving things and moving things. And what I'm doing to the top of the bags is just re-rolling them down and using giant safety pins to lock them in place. So I can easily get into them later, but it keeps them from flopping about. And I'm hoping the little bit of lanolin that's still left in the wool will keep all the safety pins from rush, uh, rusting out. All right, if you notice that bag to the right hand side of the white unit. It's gonna get another one joining it soon. That's from Penny. She's a Jacob U that one of my friends owns. So that one stays separate because I'm doing special spins for her. Oh, no, there's one of the labels. Now all these bags, show the brightly colored ones, I made myself. They're made out of one yard of fabric in a pillowcase style. Super easy. And if you want a video on that, just let me know. Now, this one, for some reason, I had in a tub, so definitely have to redo that. And I separated some of its finer stuff out in the bag, or the other bag, that's why it was a little separated. And I went, um, it's finer than Jacob, it has to go in here. Oh, and those are huge bags. Those are made out of three yards, probably overkill. I'm gonna have to cut those down later. And with this unit, I actually had room at the top for the larger bags. So, wound up with a few things on the top. Yep, another three yard bag. Yep, they're huge and they stick out. But that's for another day. Another mixed breed lung wool. This one's a beautiful gray. Actually, fluffs up really nice. And that's a brown one. 
that's Midnight. Oh. It's pretty fun when you learn the sheep and they all have names. <laughs> I'm just saying, what else do I do? Okay. Move the mohair out of the way. Now I have some in feed sacks, just because I haven't made more bags. And I'm pinning the tops of those so they don't fall over with the stuff falling out. So the feed sacks sit really well on the top. And this one I had a one ounce sample that was separate from it, which I'm pinning to the side so I can see what's in there. Now that's a bag of coarser parts of the Jacobs and near their back ends it gets a bit coarser. And I just separated those out for dryer balls because it's not that nice to spin with, showing the front of the animal so much nicer. And that's a little sample of the fleece I have so that gets pinned on the side. Great thing with these racks is that you can hook things on the sides of them. Just make sure they're not too heavy. That one, where am I putting it? Oh no. Okay, that's more really nice dark gray. Brown. It's like, where are these going? See, I, need, I, I would love a couple more spots, but you got the room. Well, I have the room I have, and that's all. So, both the pennies are there her first year fleece and her second. They're all stacked on top of each other. Some hand comb top on the side. Basically, the white unit has little bits and pieces and special things like bags of Angora and alpaca and all the bats that I've made, which a lot of them have ribbons wrapped around them and are labeled. All right, and here's the unveiling of the whole room so you can see what I got at the top all my big bags organized by thickness on the side. and the other tower of the pre-made bats and special fibers. And on the side, we have some add-ins and braids. And then we have penny fleeces stacked on top of each other. Have a great day, y'all. Go clean your rooms. <laughs> Bye.